Hi, Limit Break Overdrive with another Pad of Exile video. This one is going to be about Exile Con 2023, the first day. We had the reveal for PoE 2, well, the reveal of the trailer, and for the new PoE 1 League. Uh, the video is going to be split in two parts. Uh, I'm going to have timestamps down below. So if you want to skip to a certain part, either PoE 2 or 1, then you'll be able to. So my first impression while seeing the gameplay footage, not the part where they were explaining how things work, because I mean that was slow, but it was intended. Uh, I mean I was kind of disappointed. I was watching him play, and I was like, "Yeah, it's slower than D4, which I think is too slow already." I got bored quite quickly. I was not happy about that, like not at all. But right after. Like the first hour and a half where they spoke about PoE 2 then PoE 1 and whatnot, Crip interviewed Jonathan and I think this is the first thing Crip asked him actually and apparently we're gonna get some more speed almost as fast as PoE 1. I'm just gonna have the clip right now. All right why don't we kick it off here. So um, we saw that uh, PoE 2 in the demo it was a little bit slower gameplay paced than what people experience if they play Path of Exile 1 right now. Right. But from what I've seen in the gameplay showcases, you guys generally try to slow it down for the purpose of the showcase. That's true. That's so, true. So what is what is the goal, I guess, is the question. So Do we want to change Path of Exile 2 pacing versus Path of Exile 1? Um, so to be honest, it will be a little bit slower, um, but kind of not at the 50th, sorry to get technical, but not at the 50th percentile. Like I think that uh, part of the issue is um, in POE 1 is that like, there's so many multiplicative mechanics that go on that like at the sort of 95th percentile, at like, the top end of player, you get this like absolute ridiculousness with like, you know, 600 projectiles per second and that sort of shit. And it's like, well, you know, it's like, 600 projectiles per second, it's like you just can't see fucking anything. And so you don't have any ability to respond to boss mechanics. Like, I don't think it's as fun as when you actually have, you know, like 60 projectiles per second or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, we still want it to be ridiculous. It's just that we don't want it to be, like, at the very top end, you don't want it to be quite quite as ridiculous as it is. Yeah. And it's honestly just so that you actually get some interesting counterplay with the bosses. You get some more, some more, some more like, stuff going on there. Yeah, if it was not for this question Crypt asked, then I would have been disappointed from what I've seen for PoE 2, but with that in mind, yeah, I think the game is going to be fun. I, I'm i not the biggest fan of the tactical combat, like, what they show with the Hmong is something I'd never play. Like, you just attack with something that does no fucking damage, and then you move back, and you try to freeze, and when, once the enemy's frozen, now you can do damage. I, I really don't like that. Not at all. I like my playstyle. Like, I play a lot of Bone Shatter, and I like... Going up to an enemy, dropping my totems if I need to to get buffs, and just whack, whack, whack. That's what I like. And I wonder, speaking of Bone Chatter, how it's going to work in PoE 2, since the like benefit of the skill is to stack trauma stacks to get more damage and whatnot. So if you can just use the same skill, then how is it going to work? I mean, we've got enough time to even try the game in beta or for them to tell us more. So we'll see when we get there. The other thing that I was quite shocked to see in the trailer was gold, like pretty much everyone else. Uh, from what I've I've seen in the trailer and in the interviews afterwards, and from Mattel and Ziz that played the game on stream, uh, I think it's going to be used simply to buy equipment only from vendor. They didn't seem to be able to buy any currency. Maybe this was just for the build they played on. I don't know. But if that's the case, I'm pretty sure gold's gonna be useless. Like it's gonna sit in our stash and it's not gonna do anything with it. They said, I think Jonathan said it, there would be gambling and basically to get a uniques and any bases. But I mean, we already have Gwenon with expedition. So is she gonna be gone? Will we lose some expedition part or will we get both? That I'm curious about, but I mean, I, don't like gold. It's not that big of a deal. I can just not use it. And just use my currency. I'm just like in the back of my mind. I'm just scared that we're gonna get way, way less currency for that reason. Since we get gold, I don't know why. This is just me. I hope I'm wrong, but yeah, not a big fan of gold. Right, on a more positive note, uh, we get six new classes for PoE2, with each of them having three ascendancies. So we're gonna get like. 
36 ascendancies overall something like that I don't know it's gonna be a shit ton uh, I mean it's it's fine it's gonna open up some new I want to say archetype but since you can already play any skill with like you can play a melee witch if you want like glacial hammer I don't I don't know you can do whatever you want so it's not really archetypes but in a sense it's like a way to specialize like saboteur for traps and I don't know that kind of thing so it's nice I think it can be interesting and it's gonna be allowing them to do more I guess because now with the classes we have they have to cover everything like they have to cover uh, trigger like they did with the trigger bots and melee spells bow totems like there's a lot of things with that I mean they're gonna be able to focus more on specific minions and whatnot so that's probably gonna be really really nice spirit for reserving our auras I think it's a good idea because I mean I don't mind the current system with the mana because you just try to lower the cost of your the mana cost of your skill and you're good you're good to go but I think it's in the long run it might be better with spirit because you can invest to get more spirits to apparently get more auras than we have now but I don't think they're just going to be damage buffs they seem to be changing a lot from what I've seen like the skills like I don't think we're gonna get LMP and GMP we saw just multiple projectiles it was a lot less damage for two projectiles only so I think they want to tone down things unless we can get a lot more projectiles from other sources I don't know just a side note there so spirit or minions or reservation of auras and that kind of thing is interesting so I think Jonathan said we were starting with a hundred and one aura required a hundred to reserve. But in the build they played, I might be wrong. I might have seen the wrong thing, but I think they had like a thousand spirit. Maybe it was a hundred and I just misread, but we will probably be able to get a lot. Jonathan said in the interview that a scepter might give like 600. He said that the numbers might change, but if you can get a lot more for your minions and your auras then it might be interesting we also got more information about the new link and gem systems uh, gems start with two sockets so you can give them one support only which early game might slow you down some depending but you're gonna get different types of jewelers to increase the amount of links to three link four link five link six link and so and the last one is gonna be rare but not too rare like it's not gonna be stupid rare because you have the possibility to get a lot more six links than now so i think it's way better than just a few things but at the same time like there's gonna be the nostalgia of just crank fusing but to be fair this system is way better because i never almost never link my armor or weapon with fusings i just wait to get 1500 and i use the, the bench to craft the, the links because it's too RNG for my liking. So that is nice. And for chromes, it's going to be deterministic. So if you need a blue socket on Bone Shatter, for example, I don't know. You will just use the chrome and select the color. But in order to make using off colors harder, uh, all the attribute requirements will be additive. So you, if you want two, three blue sockets, you might need a lot of int. So it's another investment just to offset the fact that we can choose colors, which again, in my opinion is fair and is probably going to be better, feel better in the long run. And they added a dodge roll like everybody saw. And I think, I mean, it's good and bad because movement skills have some some identity to them like flame dash and leap slam but on the other hand flame dash is just too good compared to the others like it goes through like for maven and the beam you can just go through and not get touched leap slam doesn't work for that it's harder to play so overall it's probably gonna be better to have just dodge roll on spacebar okay so coming back to spirit i forgot i forgot to mention that you could get more from items and passives and I think there's this, I mean, they said that killing bosses in zones will give you some permanent reward, like 
for example, plus 10 spirit or that kind of thing. So you might be able to get some more this way. So again, it's we're going to have to test it to see how it goes, if it's worth or not. Because it has to be substantial, otherwise nobody's going to kill these bosses. But on the other hand, I don't think they want it to be mandatory because these are optional bosses. So it's like getting right there in the middle that's going to be hard. Uh, the stone freeze immobilize, like the crowd control basically, is going to build up over time. Which means you will be able to freeze bosses, which I think it's better this way. Because right now, like for Glacial Hammer, you can freeze, or you could freeze screens. I'm not sure if you still can anymore, but for bosses, it's kind of hand. Same for stunning with bow chatter. I don't care about building stun because I do enough damage to just stun and get the the, main, the splash damage you get when you stun when I map. So I don't invest in it because like it's bosses, it's freaking useless. That could be good, but on the other hand, it plays more into the tactical combat, which I don't like. I just want to go and whack and clear everything fast so again it's gonna be a matter of does it feel good or not it's hard to say with just half an hour of gameplay we're gonna have to wait for the beta next june and test it so yeah tldr the use of multiple skills i'm not a big fan of i hope you don't have to that it's not mandatory you can just still use one skill like bone shatter totems just have fun i hope you can still do that so if you can it's just giving more opportunity for people to do different builds so again the more you can do the better so so we have the reveal for the 3.22 expansion trials of the ancestors i have playing there and it's an auto battler which is i mean it, it's interesting uh, that's out of nowhere but like tower defense was out of nowhere for blight and it it worked I mean, it's not my favorite mechanic, but it's fine. I, I mean, I see it, I do it, and that's all right. So they probably can make it work. That I'm not too concerned about. But the way it seemed to be working, that looks interesting to me. Like, not really the placing your warriors and whatnot, but like the leaderboard. And once you, you can get... Ren not, I want to say Renown. Please help me. I've played D4 too much. Uh, but you get some sort of... Renown, for lack of a better word, with each factions or tribes, and then you can hire you know, more warriors or get items, and each of them have a unique you can get, and Inikoro's got a few uniques and an item core called Inikoro's Lock, which seems pretty strong for crafting. Basically, it's going to allow you to see the outcome of the next one you want to use. For example, you've got an item, you say, oh, I want to exalt it. Look what the exile is going to give you. And let's say it's, give, it's going to give you 2.1 life regen. You might say, eh, I'm good. I might just use Conqueror Exalted Orb. Because, oh, now I'm getting tier 1 regen. Or I'm getting plus 1 gem level or whatnot. Now you use it. Or you saying anything because it's not influence mod. But you get exploded chance, for example. I don't know. No, now it might be worth to use it. You can... Have more agency in a way, not really, it's still gonna be pretty RNG, but it's an interesting item. Uh, they've added Sanctum back in the game, and I like the way they did it. First, you're gonna get the first floor of the Sanctum drop to drop as an item, similar to the Temple of Azoidal now. Uh, once you run the floor either in one go, or you can do few rooms and come back later and do the rest at the end of the floor the second floor is gonna drop but it's gonna be keeping your afflictions and your bones and you go all the way through and so you can just stack up a bunch and just basically do a sanctum day if you want i believe they're tradable same for relics but you, we don't have sanctified relics anymore which i get why but would have been fun to get them that is kind of nice because we could get a lot of a lot of good rewards like divines, chaos, regals. I'm happy we get another way to get currency. Uh, and now defense will help. It's a good resolve. So they've balanced in 
You did call inspiration. I mean, the energy shield for resolve. And the resolve itself, since if you're tanky, you're not gonna lose as much resolve, so you don't need to get like plus 150 or plus 300 resolve, for example. So I'm curious to try it, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be pretty nice, especially for melee builds. Again, you could be playing explosive arrow totems, just put your totems and hide behind a wall while they would kill. Compared to melee, where you needed to go to the monster, attack, then move away, then attack. It was harder, it was doable, but now it's probably gonna be more level across the board, so pretty happy. Okay, wanna go quickly because the video is gonna be already kind of long, but they've reworked two ascendancies, Guardian and Chieftain. Not Gladiator for whatever reason, but oh well. Uh, Guardian, I don't know a lot about. I've never played Guardian. I've barely played Templars. I think I've played once an Inquisitor to try something, but eh, it's not really my cup of tea. But Guardian, uh, the things that looked alright to me were Time of Need. That looks pretty insane. You get 100% life regen every 4 seconds, and you get something else that's going to be on screen. It's pretty good. Uh, but other than that, I don't like it because I don't play group. I've played group first time this league, actually. So, I mean, I it's not saying other players, it's saying allies. Cause I, so I believe the summon relic and sentinel that you get with this ascendancy will get affected by these nodes. So that could be strong, I just don't really know. I, I don't play minions or that kind of thing. So, for me, it's not really interesting. Especially the one with link target. If you're, it's useless if you're not linked with somebody. So, taking a full ascendancy note just for that, eh, not really. I don't like it. Chieftain, however, looks pretty strong. I've never played Chieftain again, so it's not ascendancies that I've used. But I mean, there are a lot of nodes that seem pretty strong. Like Valako, it's basically getting melding of flesh without a downside. It's pretty strong. For maximum resistances, you get really tanky with that. Uh, Tessalio helps you cap in your res easier, and you need to take Tessalio to get Valico. So basically, it's taking your plus fire res, not maximum res, and applying it to cold and lightning, but at half their value. So you're gonna have to stack less fire and cold resist to get res cap, which is kind of nice. Might help with gear or using a, one more unique for certain builds i don't know i think it's it's quite nice and gamma U sounds nuts you can take on the skill tree for example physical damage nodes and you convert them to fire damage as long as they're in radius of a jewel so you get the jewel socket you use any jewel you want not unique jewels i believe and in a large radius all these nodes get stern into fire damage, so be a cold, lightning, fizz. So it could help switching your tree around, being stronger. So I think it's really, really interesting. Tukuhama gives three links for free. Uh, two links for free, you get Fist of War and Cicero Call. So for slow slam builds, I guess, you get Fist of War for free. So again, that can be pretty interesting. In fact, I might try Chieftain this league as a second char. If I, I might try slam builds because it's the first time I'm interested in by this ascendancy, so good. And Ramako is strong, I believe, for ignite builds. I'm not sure if it's that big of a deal though, because I, I've tried explosive arrow once with champions, and again, I don't know, I don't know squat about chieftain, but I'm interested to trying it now. And the last thing I wanted to talk about is the thing that I like the most about this expansion, and it's the tattoos. They look really insane, like basically every small nodes, traveling nodes being dex, int, strength, and even the bigger one, like 30 int, 30 strength, you will be able to add a tattoo to them and they're gonna get modified. For example, instead of getting 10 dexterity, you might get two movement speed or you can get plus one level gems. And they, I'm sure they didn't show all of them. And I mean, you can get what, 30? Let's say, I play Bone Shatter Juggernaut. I mainly need strength. I need a little bit of dexterity, but I mainly need strength on my trees. And especially if I use Brass Dome, strength is not going to give me bonus to my life. So I can change all my travel node, almost all of them, from strength to 
whatever they're gonna give me fire res or damage or I think this is really really nice I, I can't wait to try it out but video is gonna has been running already for long enough let me know down in the comments what you think about this expansion and PoE 2 in general are you more on the side of PoE 1 PoE 2 while keeping in mind PoE 2 will be faster according to Jonathan and I believe we can trust him so yeah let me know down in the comments what you liked dislike if you agree or disagree with me any comments I'm pretty much responding to all of them so thanks for watching and see you in the next one